Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel, and I'm finally here with another video for y'all. Um, today we're going to be doing a video on the Parku brush pens, and I was kindly sent these to kind of just test out and review them. So as always, I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and see how my experience was with them. These pens come in a set of 60, and they are water-based markers. Um, they come with two tips, so you're going to have the brush tip on one end and then on the other end you're going to have a felt tip, or a fine tip I mean, and that tip I believe is 0.4 millimeters as it says on their website and on Amazon. So here I'm just making a color chart for all 60 colors in the set and something that it's advertised as being that I completely agree with is that the inks are very vibrant. Um, as you'll see throughout the creation of this color chart, the colors are really saturated and very vibrant and it's one of the things I love about um, these markers. Now I will say I'm going to be going into more detail about that later, about the colors, my experience, color chart, all of that. Um, when we get into the speed paint portion, but for now, I just want to note that these colors are very nice and there's a good range of them. But again, I'll be going more into depth about that in just a little bit. Another thing to note is that these markers are advertised as being able to be used for drawing, illustration, scrapbooking, brush lettering, all of that fun stuff. Now onto the bulk of this review, so we're gonna go through some pros and cons, and I'm first gonna list the pros. So first things first, um, as I mentioned before, inks are vibrant, really nice. And I'm not really sure about the distribution of filler, but I would say that this one doesn't contain too much filler, um, the colors are very vibrant, and it's even, but not even, you know what I mean? I'll mention it later on in another part of the review, but for now I'm just gonna concentrate on just some first impressions that I had. So, I noticed that unlike other water-based markers, like Crayola for example, these ones aren't streaky in that they have that blocky lay down. Because you know when you're trying to color with Crayola or any other type of water-based marker, you'll lay it down, but you'll see all the streaks and the individual marks that you're making and I'm thinking that you don't see that as much with these because the inks are so vibrant and so bright and saturated so it kind of um, blurs out that little like streaky line. But also keep in mind that because of this that would probably mean that these markers aren't completely as transparent as watercolors. Other than that, um, the actual colors in the color chart are pretty decent. There's a good range of purples and blues and pinks in this set, which I think is pretty good. Um, I will note something about this later on. So something that I forgot to mention previously in the beginning of the video was the price point, and I would add this under the pros. So you can find this on Amazon or on the Parku website, and I'll be linking both in the description. And you can find these for about $19.99 for 60 colors, which is obviously this set that I'm reviewing here. So I think that's a pretty good price for um, 60 markers, so that's definitely a pro. So now we are going to go into the negatives or the cons of these markers. So the first being the inks. So while I did praise them previously, I do find some fault in the inks. And I'll explain. So during the coloring of the hair, especially the laying down of the base colors, you guys would have seen that when I was laying it down, the ink kind of looked a little splotchy, um, kind of patchy in that there wasn't an even lay down. Now I understand that you know, when you're coloring with any type of water-based marker, the friction of the nib against the paper and any kind, of, any kind of scrubbing is going to cause some type of tear of the paper. But this was just odd. Um, the layering properties just didn't work out that well because the more you laid down the color, it just really seemed more and more splotchy. And the other markers that I've used, um, the other water-based markers I've used, 
didn't do this, so that was kind of weird for me. I did try, um, I think, four different papers with these markers, because I couldn't just blame the markers, right? I have to really see if it's truly the markers or if it's the paper. So I tried the Canson XL, Canson Montval, um, let's see, the Strathmore 400 series watercolor. And I forgot the other paper, but they were all watercolor papers, and they all gave me a similar result. When you're doing one layer, just one simple layer of the marker, it's, it's fine. But the more you layer, it just looks more and more splotchy and patchy. And I'm not sure if that's the fault of the inks or not, but that's one thing that I noticed for sure. Another thing I noticed is, um, if you've watched any of my previous watercolor marker videos, you'll see that I love using a water brush pen with these markers, or just any type of water-based marker. And what the pen is, it has a water reservoir in it, which allows you to paint on the go. So I was using that, and usually what I'll do is lay down the marker ink first, and then use the pen to kind of spread it out and blend it. But that kind of didn't work. It was almost as if I laid down permanent marker and tried to spread it around, but nothing really happened. So these markers really aren't that spreadable, and they really absorb into the paper quickly, so it doesn't give you enough time to necessarily blend with water. Which was why I decided to stick with just using these, like, regular markers. And on that note, they actually work pretty well as markers, aside from the whole splotchy, patchy thing going on. Um, when you're laying them down, it's pretty nice, and blending the markers when the other inks are wet is also pretty nice as well. It's just that whole thing with the texture that kind of got to me a little bit. And now we're turning back to the topic of the color chart. So despite having a good distribution of purples, blues, and pinks, I will say that most of the colors are mid-tone. And there also aren't that many pales or dark colors because of the mid-tone distribution. And because of that, um, it's hard to really shade unless you're just using black. In their defense though, in terms of shading, um, yes, with watercolors, it's transparent, so the more you overlap it, the darker it will get. So there is that fact. And there's also a lack of skin tones. Pale and really darker skin tones. So pale skin tones usually, you know, those ones look very yellow or orange, while the darker skin tones, there's only really four browns in here, and two of them are almost olive green browns, and the other two are very heavily red undertones. And yes, there are people who do have red undertones, but these ones are a tad bit hitting the mahogany maroon side, so that was just a little concerning. Which is why for this character demonstration here, I decided to use a less natural color because there weren't that many um, straight skin tones that I could really use. Thus, in conclusion, I would rate these in between a yeh and a ne. So that would mean a meh. And by far, these are not the worst markers I've ever tried. In fact, I actually really enjoy working with them despite all of what I said. Um, they're very nice when you're layering down just even coats of one color. So if you are a scrapbooker, adult coloring book addict, or a brush letter -er, I think these would be great for you. I don't think they would benefit from someone who does a lot of layering. So those are my final thoughts, and I definitely say, you know, if you want to try them out, by all means. Especially if you're into craft activities or just laying down straight things of color. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!